everybody talks about Pine Lake being in the backyard of my place or my grandfather's old farm and Tim's house, whatever. But you know what? After race weekend, you can come down here and test until you're blue in the face and it doesn't do you any good. It just, it has to be the prepared racetrack. And yeah, we've made laps around here, but it's not like racing. But the most fun I had was right out there on that lake behind us, John, riding in the wintertime. We come down here and, you know, Bud and Dave Fisher and some of their cousins, Dwayne and Ed and myself, and just a whole big group of people from this local area. They had three wheelers and on the, at the onset, and they'd go out here and plow the lake off. And we'd ride on the ice and just countless hours at night and all that stuff. Even Bud would go out here on a track with his old blazer and plow the snow off. And we'd race around here with the lights on, and it was awesome. It was awesome. And of course, then Wild Man, he'd be down at the pavilion down here where they have the party at Saturday night and had a fire going and always had. Like one time he had pop machine in there, you know, and you could go in there and get whatever you wanted and Hoppy would bring food out and it was just an absolute awesome deal, man. It was it was cool. Of course, you never wanted to ride here unless you asked permission. And uh, as we all know, Bill had a construction company and then they had the Honda shop and pretty much every night this was his, like, getaway. And he would be here and I'd come down and, hey, can we go ride? And, you know, and as long as you asked, it was always, yeah, go ride, man, have fun. He didn't ask, though. I wasn't so good. Better not bring a buddy on a Yamaha because he hated those things. <laughs> but uh, speaking of old man Fisher, a lot of people knew him as a grumpy old man that wanted to kick you out. How did you know, old man? Fisher? You know what? I had a lot of run-ins with Bill too. He was a grumpy old guy on race weekend. But you know what? He would give pretty much anybody the shirt off his back. He was an awesome guy, and a lot of us wouldn't be here without him. You know, and it uh, was a good guy good businessman and just good dude. I've only missed I think two of them since about 1970 so uh, you know I used to walk down here from the farm and stand out here on the fence and watch these guys run dune cycles and six wheelers and all that stuff even when they had a mud pit out here and it was it was unbelievable and one year the Goodyear blimp was here it, it was just it was awesome and it's awesome for the area and it's a huge economical impact, you know, when the races come to town, all the businesses are, you know, busier, and it's, it's just, it's great. You know, the Fisher family, they're, they're racers themselves, and, well, of course, Wild Man and Hoppy, they would, they had a system, and they kept it going, and it's just, Bud puts a lot of time in out here, as well as Dave, and just Billy, his nephew, I mean, it's, it's a family effort, and as you can tell by the grounds, there isn't a blade of grass out of place, and they, they have great take great pride in this. It, it's awesome. You know, since the we're all getting a little older, and you look at some of the pictures on social media, and some of the stuff Dean Sundahl posts, and all those guys, you know, but maybe there was a little hub out there in Southern California, but you know what? From where we're standing right here, there's been more national champions in ATV racing, motocross, flat track, than anywhere else in the world. And this is a hotbed of it. I mean, there's fishers, they were probably this, this was the beginning of it. And then local Yamaha shop in here town, in town, Northridge Yamaha. You've got Wisco Piston. Now what we know is Cometic Gaskets. I mean, it's a, it's a hotbed. And all those people were instrumental in this. And then my generation has come along and Tim and his brother and just all of the things, you know. So, and there's JB Racing, 6.5 Designs. Just, there's a lot of people in the ATV racing industry that this area is very similar to Southern California uh, for motorcycle racing. It's just been a little hotbed. And a lot of, not only racing here at Pine Lake, but a lot of local motocross tracks, very successful and just been a good good run. All the motorsports has, has become pretty incredible in the business that you've created. I think where your location and the history you have at Pine Lake had anything to do with it? Oh, for sure, John. I mean, it was a great start and, um, you know, it just, it's all grown and, you know, a lot of hard work. Um, spend a lot of hours, been sacrificed basically my whole life doing this stuff, you know, and it's, uh, I don't work eight hour days, that's for sure. And, um, you know, but it's, it's come full circle. Um, I still do a lot of work myself. I, uh, of course, it's my name on it, and I respect that, and respect all the customers I have. I have a lot of great customers, and um, you know, I'm very honored as well to 
take the Team, team USA ATV motocross team to Denmark this year and uh, try to defend the championship we won over there last year in Chingoli, Italy. They, they know who to get when they need to <laughs> spin wrenches. And well, you know, I don't spin a lot of wrenches over there, but I, again, work with Tim and all the traveling we did in Europe, John racing at Pontivu and been there a lot. And you have to go there totally prepared. Um, you can't go there expecting to pick just any old thing up. You gotta, you gotta send everything there that you need. And that's why the team basically approached me about managing it because they knew that I had the experience of racing in Europe and what we needed. And so the program we build is it's uh, pretty incredible and the container we ship over there is a complete race program in a box and we roll open the doors roll the generator out pour some gas in it and we're totally self-sufficient you know even when we attend races over overseas in Europe um, people know that I'm from the area where Pine Lake is at and it's a very well respected location and you know there's I don't think there's anywhere else in the world that's been racing for 49 years now soon to be 50 and um, so it's it's well known the three-wheeler movement the return of the three-wheeler did you think we'd ever see that again Sorry. Uh, I don't believe it man I mean it's of course it was my passion when I was young and uh, it's hard to believe that we see all these three-wheelers here again and I'm actually you know making parts for some of the stuff again and the old 250R four-wheelers I mean I get calls every day almost for some kind of a part and so it's it's cool but I guess it's again maybe some of the guys that are my generation or our age that are bringing some of that stuff back to life and they have a passion for it what do you predict in the future is there another 50 years in this place oh yeah yeah as long as uh, <laughs> as long as a young group can keep up with it I think that uh, they'll be racing here for a lot of years to come John